Good morning. Uh, this is Cindy Utter from My Artsy Endeavors, and what I'm going to do today is another chapter in my story. We are looking at chapter six. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is read a little excerpt from this, You Are Stronger Than You Know, uh, words of hope and encouragement for someone living with chronic illness. And this one is, know that you are never alone. You may think you are alone at the moment. And you may feel as if you are just soldiering on, but you couldn't be more wrong because you have a whole army of people behind you. So the next time you feel alone with your problems or feel downhearted in any way, remember that army of supporters behind you, people who care about you and are wishing you well. All right, that's how true is that when we're um, working through this whole process that... You know, we just feel so alone, and it's it's awful. I'm going to put a little tag in here so that I don't read it again. So this is chapter six. And you never know. I mean, maybe I will feel like I need to read it again. We'll see. But this is something huge when you're starting this battle of chronic illness, is feeling like you are completely alone. Okay? So now here we go. We are on chapter six. And we've got a couple icky pages here. Let me get, um, this one actually is gonna be fantastic for journaling on. I need to do some journaling at this point because the things that I found out in this chapter of my story um, were quite um, scary. That's the easiest way to put it. So let me get set up here and we'll be right back. All right, so we're back. Um, what I've done is I actually sat here with my white uh, Uniball Signo pen and I did a bunch of journaling. Um, it was something that had to be done uh, because what I found out in this chapter was just not fun. So let's start out. We're going to be doing both of these pages. Uh, this one is not going to have as much mixed media work on it as this one. I've got out a bunch of goodies here and we're just going to start by laying stuff down. So where are we at in this whole process? By the way, I'm using matte medium. It's just an escort bottle. And it's almost empty, so I'm to get some more. Where are we at in this lovely, beautiful <laughs> workers' comp journey? We're in the middle of headaches. Uh, last chapter, yes, I am still, still, still chasing the paperwork. Uh, I am still making all the follow-up calls. Did you get this work, or did you get this, uh, what do you call it? The, the paperwork, sorry, I just, my, my brain is not working today very well. And I think that's because I didn't sleep last night, but that's okay. Um, so am I, you know, I'm still following up. That's just part of my job at this point, apparently, is to do all of the follow-up work. Follow-up work because the companies don't like to do that. So, yes, I'm, I'm doing all these calls. Um, at this point, I need to... Let's see, I went to the doctors. They didn't have any conclusive results from the MRI. So at this point, they wanted me to do a con uh, contrast MRI, which if you don't know, basically what they do is they put stuff in your body and then they let it go through your system and it, they follow it. Okay, kind of like a, I don't know, a lead rope per se. So they want me to do a contrast MRI they want me to do physical therapy, which we've talked about before. Um, physical therapy did not work. By the time I got home, I was in worse shape than when I went. However, you know, at this point, that's still what they want me to do. Okay. Uh, waiting. A huge, huge waiting game. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for people to get paperwork in. I'm waiting for results. I'm waiting for um, paperwork decisions, decisions that affect me where I am right then and there. 
Um, it's going to affect my pay. It's going to affect the doctor's appointments I have set up. All these decisions that I'm waiting on from these companies, including the workers' comp insurance carrier, as well as the company that I worked for, you know, it, it's like pulling teeth trying to get these decisions made so that we can get on with this and I can get back to work, right? At this point, you know, I'm starting to question, all right, I've been on workers' comp for a while. What does that do to my taxes? You know, do I claim all this? Do I, you know, how does it work? So I have to start asking those questions as well. I ask, you know, my attorney, I give him a call. Hey, you know, what does this do to our taxes? What do we do? Um, we also talk, I talk to him about, all right, well, how often am I supposed to read this, re receive this um pay is it going to be weekly is it going to be bi-weekly you know what, what am i looking at here all right so while we're doing that while we're waiting on all these decisions and waiting for these companies to get back to me uh, i'm still in a ton of pain just a ton of pain I don't know how to get out of pain. There was, at this point, there was no way. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out how do I get out of this pain. I, it, it wasn't working. Whatever I was doing wasn't working. And that on top of the stress of all this crap that I'm going through, it was difficult. It was very, very difficult. And the little excerpt I read at the beginning when it talks about being alone uh, you're alone. It, it seems like you're alone in more ways than one. It seems like, you know, everybody took off and went to work and, you know, everybody's working and you go, you know, if you have to run an errand, you go out and everybody else is going on with their life and here you are stuck. And that's the only word I can use for it is stuck because that's what it feels like. It feels like you're stuck and nobody cares. That's just the way it feels. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's like, you know, all right, well, everybody else is working, so they could care less what's going on with me, and here I am stuck at home. It's sad. You do a lot of crying. You do a lot of, woe is me. You know, why me? Why, why is this happening? Why, why am I in this situation? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be working. I have audits to do. I have, you know, assignments to get done. All right. So why me? Why do I have to go through all this? And unfortunately, this affects you as well as your spouse. You know, your spouse comes home at night and you're completely just in the dumps because, you know, you've sat here all day waiting for people to call you back. Nobody's called you back. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring other than more pain. You know you're not going to sleep tonight because it hurts too much. And you just don't know if anybody really cares. Okay? It's not a fun journey. It's a very difficult journey to go through. You you just feel like you're being forgotten and you feel like you're being just left. Okay. I'm going to dry this up. I'll be right back. All right. So what I've got on my palette here is I've got a few different paints. I've got a crafter's acrylic from deco art. This is a storm cloud gray. I've got a little bit of primary yellow from golden fluid acrylics. I have a little bit of magenta and blackberry violet from Dina Wakeley's Mixed Media. Then I have Liquitex Soft Body Brilliant Purple. Okay, and I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna start over on this page. We're gonna work on this one too, but we're gonna start over here. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is some of the purples. And basically what I'm gonna do is just start playing with paint. I'm not looking for anything special at this point. I'm just gonna play. And what's better when you've got paint out than to play, right? So one of the things that people have asked me is, how do you get through all of those emotions? And let me tell you, 
it's not easy. <laughs> um, I did a ton, ton, ton of journaling. I have filled journals. Um, so much that I, that I had some friends buying them for me two and three at a time. Because I just kept filling journals. I, I needed to get all of that stress, all of the everything. I needed to get it out. There was just, it was too much. Way too much. So, that's how I dealt with it. Now, other people may deal with it other ways. I know one of the things that, you know, you really shouldn't do is self-medicate, you know, or turn to alcohol or, you know, turn to another vice like that, you know. And some people do, unfortunately. Chronic pain is not a friendly thing for anybody to have to go through. At all. Chronic pain is mean. It's hard. It's unforgiving. It doesn't care that, you know, you were up all night last night and not able to sleep. It doesn't care. Chronic pain just doesn't care. It's still there. It doesn't matter. All I'm doing with this is I'm just kind of dampening it around, trying to get rid of some of the brush, part, brush strokes. I don't want them all on here. And just playing. I'm playing. And I'm actually going to pull out, I've got a couple stencils here that I want to use. I'm going to pull this one out right here. Because what I want to do is take some of that paint off, which is good. Now you can do this if your paint is not completely dry. Unfortunately, once acrylic paint dries, it's a lot harder to do that with. So I'm just going to move this stuff away. So like I said, I, I journaled. Um, I talked to my spouse. My husband, thank God, he is such a um, supporting person. He, you know, I'd lay there and cry. And, and I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He would hold me and just, you know, he, he understood. He knows that, you know, this isn't me. This isn't the Cindy that, you know, um, that he met and fell in love with. I was having, you know, I couldn't do things that I normally could do. I was hurting, and I felt like nobody cared. I felt not, not so much nobody as in the company or the, um, the, comp, the workers' comp people. It was like you know, they just didn't care. And that's a difficult thing to go through when you're trying to get better and you're trying to get back to work and you're trying to um, deal with the pain all at the same time. It's scary. Scary and hard. Very hard to do. So, journal. Um, if you're afraid somebody is going to read your journal, hopefully you have the communication that you can talk to somebody and say, you know, please just stay out of this. This is, you know, my inner anger, my inner fears, my inner thoughts, my, you know, you know, give me the privacy, give me the, um, the common courtesy of leaving it alone. It's funny they say that, too, because my husband has never touched my journals, right? And here, oh, I don't know, not too long ago, a little bit ago, um, I was writing one night in one of my journals, and I had finished it, and I was like, woohoo, another journal's done. And I just set it aside, and he says, just very gingerly, he's like, can I read it? I said, absolutely. I have, no, you know, I, I, I have nothing that I keep from him. So... <laughs> He just flipped through a page randomly and he starts reading, flips through another page, reads some more, flips through a third page and he goes, wow. And I said, why? What's up? And I said, you think it's crazy? He goes, honey, he goes, if anything ever happened to you, I could be right there with you just by reading these journals. He says, this is you. 
I said, yeah, it is. It's, it's my thoughts and feelings and dreams and hopes and all of it, you know, bound, bound up into one. And I think he was very surprised at um, how much I put in my journals, for one. I also think he was surprised at, well, I know he was surprised. He says, he said, you listen to me. <laughs> I said, yes, I do. <laughs> because in there I had, you know, written something about Jeff said, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I had put my, <laughs> he's like, I didn't think you listened. <laughs> so anyways, you know, um, it, it's going to be my story that's going to pass on to, you know, my husband, my kids, that kind of thing. So that's what I use my journals for. And I'll tell you, without my journals, there's no way I could have made it through this chronic pain stuff. It just wouldn't have happened. All right, I need to dry these up and we'll be right back. All right, so we're pretty well dry. Now I've got this stencil out. It's just, it looks like an invoice, but I just like the fact that it's got some writing on it. And I'm going to go back in with some of this gray. Now, one of the reasons I'm using the colors I am gray, gray's a downer, right? You talk about, you know, you have a gray day, that kind of thing. Well, that's where I'm at at this point. I mean, I'm not happy. <laughs> um, it's just so difficult to fight. You, you just, every day you wake up and you have to fight. You have to fight for anything, whether it's treatment or it doesn't matter. You just, you have to fight for it. And it just seems like it takes forever. You can't really see this a whole lot, but I like it. I like that it's there. So I'm good with it. All right, so I've got that gray on there. Now I'm going to, you know what? We're just going to clean it off over here. Good idea, huh? There we go. Cleaning it off. There, that's done. All right, so that one I'm going to put back. Now, what else have I got out here? I have got some, I've got to dry this up real quick. And I want to lighten it up. So in order to lighten it up, what I'm going to use is some gesso. And I'm going to have to use my mat. Sorry, I'm going to be out of frame here for a second, but I just need to put a little bit of gesso on my mat. And then what I want to do is kind of grunge it. So I'm just taking some gesso on my brayer and hoping you guys can see this. Oh, hang on, let me flip it around. Let's do that. We'll work on the other page in a minute. Um, so I just got the gesso on my, on my um, table. And I'm just going to add some here and there. Okay. And what it did basically is some of it just caught the highlights of the different textures on there, which is good. I don't know if you can see it. See how it kind of highlighted in between the papers? Just highlights the textures. And I like that just because it kind of gives it a rough look. All right. And while I'm doing that, I did see that page. I might as well do it to this one since I've got a little bit of gesso left here. This page is going to have some other colors put on it too. Actually, I will do that while I'm right here. I want to use some of this yellow on here. Okay, I'm going to open this back up so it doesn't stick to my mat while it dries. Um, just going to take another sponge and I'm going to take some of that yellow that I brought out. I just want some yellow on here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so there's my yellow. Put her down in there. Okay, you need to go down in there. All right, let me dry these two pages up and then we're going to keep going. We'll be right back. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some more um, of a background on. And I've got some stamps here. These are just some of my background stamps. And I really like this one. It's like a cage. <laughs> and, you know, it's at this point, that's where I feel like I am, is in this cage. You know? Um, alone. 
again, even though I know you're not alone, and, you know, I will keep saying that, but that's the feeling. The feeling is that you're alone and that there's nobody else around. Um, physically, mentally, you know, socially, um, all of that. And it's very difficult because it feels like, you know, you don't have, you, you just don't have anybody to turn to, even though that is not true. Uh, these are different border stamps that I've gotten, and there's a couple of them I wanted to, or one or two I want to use on here. I really like this one. This new, new. You know what? I'm going to hold off on the border. We might do those in a bit. Right now what I'm going to do is bring out some of the focal points I've got here. <clears throat> and I want to talk to you about the biggest thing that, um, actually this I'm going to use on this other page. Um, the biggest thing that I learned during this month, now we're still talking only the middle of November of 2012. So here I am at home, all right, by myself. This is how I feel. Broken. I'm completely broken. All right. It's so difficult. But what I wanted to tell you about this chapter, this is November of 2012. This was my very first clue that I received that this couldn't have, this would not get better. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these down and we'll talk about that. I'm going to use some glue that I've got here. This is a, I think it was like a Martha Stewart liquid glue or a glue that was on sale on clearance. That's where I get all my glues is on clearance. I never pay full price. Um, so anyway, um, my very first clue, I actually had a disabil disability work nurse, bleh, a disability nurse call me from my employer and we were actually just discussing, you know, how how this is going and, and she asked me a ton of questions and what my concern was is I was questioning my approval for my absence and because the company that I worked for you have one year um, as long as you have the medical and you have the um, you know the documentation that you need you have one year so you don't lose your job basically one year of disability and once that year is up or if you don't have your paperwork the correct paperwork or the medical paperwork that you need, then you are in risk of losing your job. Okay. Um, this was actually one of my dolls that I had made a while ago, one of my scrap dolls. And she's made on popsicle sticks, and I just broke her in half. Because that's exactly how I feel at this point. You know, I'm at home and I feel like I'm being broken in half. All right. Um, so this disability nurse called me from work and she says to me, this is also going on here, and this is a brick wall. Uh, she says to me, she says, she's asking me a whole ton of questions, and, I, and my question to her is, why wouldn't I be approved? You know, I don't, I don't get it. And what she made the comment to me, she said, from what my doctor wrote, I probably would never get rid of the pain. So this was my very first clue, and again, this was November of 2012. So my doctor then had stated, you know, that um, the pain was here to stay. But there was no fixing for it. Now what I'm doing is I have this, this is a wall, and I'm going to tell you it's going right over top of me because... I feel like here I am at home and this is what it feels like. It feels like I need to do it a little bit more. 
It feels like I am looking out from behind this wall. And it feels like, there it is. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it or not. There's my wall. Okay, and there's my broken body in my wall. So what it feels like to me is that I'm standing behind this wall of pain, loneliness, people not care, not don't care, and here I am. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so what I did is I, I just added a little bit of, I just made a couple spots of that darker and um, I just had to get my composure there for a second. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm taking some white gesso, I'm gonna go back in with my brayer. I'm learning to love this little tool, let me tell you. I am learning that I like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna use my brayer to ink up my um, border stamp with white gesso. See if it works. Yes, it does. And again, that's all I'm doing is just using this to run the white gesso and putting these across. Even though I, whoops, even though I'm behind my brick wall, I still need to have some type of. Uh, Some type of pretty, right? Come on, stick there. I just washed it off. Now oh, it doesn't want to stick. All right, let's use up some more white gesso. I'm not sure why it won't stay on there. It's got the plastic. Hmm. Alright, so. Ooh, that one's got a lot of gesso. That's alright, I don't care. Let's take this. It goes right here. Good. And the last one. Because I am. Oh, yeah, maybe I can. Maybe I can try to put it down through here. Let's try it. No, it's going to be a pain in the butt, but we're going to do it with our fingers. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going underneath the page with my fingers and getting the stamp. See? I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure why this isn't sticking. Both my um, block and the stamp is clean, so I'm not sure what the issue is. Good enough. Okay. All right, so now I <laughs> see even my border's broken. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what a process. Just cleaning off my stamp now, getting the gesso out of it, the extra gesso, so that it doesn't dry up in between the marks, and then just give me flat spaces. So that's good. All right, so here I am broken. I'm gonna let this page dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna go back to our other page, maybe. I'm gonna go back to this page. Now, because I've got all my journaling here, um, this is a monster that I made a while ago. This monster is gonna have a spot right here. And you know what, I am actually going to Give him a big white space to sit next, sit on. Because I want him to show up. Because this monster, don't tell anybody, this monster is workers' cop. Okay, there they are. <laughs> it's them. And I, I found this puzzle. And it's not made for this, but this is what I'm going to do with it. I am going to um, do, 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 do. Uh, okay. Mm, mm. Mm. 
Okay, you probably cannot read this from where you're at or from how, where I've got it, but what this says is they don't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through with a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of pink. And I'm just going to cover up. Hold on. I'm going to cover up all of the ones I did not choose. And what this says is they don't care. And I'm sorry, this is just my opinion um, from my experience. This is how I feel. And uh, so far, nothing has changed it. So, and it's been actually Sunday. It was four years from the last day I worked. All right, now I want to put this little guy. Oh, I got him stuck on my gesso. I want to glue him in here. I think he's so cute, but he's a monster. So we're going to take him, even though he's a cute monster, he's going to represent a bad monster right now. So this is my monster. <laughs> Isn't he cute? my monster and this is what I have to say about it huh. this looks like it came off some type of a I don't know, recipe or a restaurant this is some you know what this is I bet you it's a restaurant menu for kids apparently I brought it home surprise Okay, the reason I'm not running my hands across that is it is still wet, as you can see down. Well, you can't see down here. There's a bunch of paint. But that's how I feel about that. I want... Where's my little brush? I want my little brush back. And I'm just going to take this... So, in this chapter, what we've talked about is the fact that I learned, or the first time I heard that this is a very good possibility, that this is permanent. Um, wow, talk about a slap in the face. Talk about, oh my God, what do I do now? You know, it, this can't be. They got to be wrong. They have to be wrong, okay? How, how do I, you know... This can't be true. <laughs> I, this can't happen. All right. So this is where I'm at. Now, I have some white gesso over here, and I really don't want to just um, whoops, lose it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put a few spots up here of white. And these spots I'm going to do some journaling in and basically put, you know, where I was, where we're at at this point. I also have to put my chapter number in here. So we'll do that. I think chapter six will go here. So let's see, we're still doing paperwork. We're waiting for calls. This is the first time I've heard that um, pain's not gonna go away. All right, so let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna dry these up and do my journaling in them. 
And then we are going to wrap up chapter 6, which is where we're at. So give me just a minute, let me dry these up, and we'll be right back. All right, so this is pretty dry. Um, there's still a few spots here and there. But this is chapter 6. Okay. I need to move. You know, I always do this. I end up with these two little inches to create in. All right, so we've got chapter 6. Uh, let me just... All right, so we're still on the paperwork. And calls. Follow up. Right? Okay, um, another big thing I'm gonna put on here is waiting. That's a huge game. Oops, took off the paint, took off the gesso. It wasn't quite dry. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Don't ever hold your breath when it comes to anything that has to do with workers comp. Trust me on that. All right, and on here is where I'm going to put um, uh, let's see, the first time, first clue is basically what this is. The first clue, pain is here to stay. Okay. And just a quick note, while I'm doing this, I've got to tell you guys, this at times is very difficult to do, but in another way, this is so therapeutic. Um, just thinking back to how I felt and how sad it was and how um, just down I was and how I just didn't understand it. You know, why, why, why me, why me, why me? I mean, it's so amazing to look back and realize how hard it was and I made it through it. Okay, I, I'm, I was strong enough to make it through this. And it's just, it's a huge, huge um, eye-opener, really, to realize that, oh my gosh, I made it through all this. You know, I, I was strong enough to make it through what was thrown at me. And that just amazes me. I'm not sure why, but it does. It just amazes me. So I hope you've gotten something out of this chapter um, today. This image to me is very, very powerful. And it's perfect for where I was at at this point in my chronic pain journey. All right. So I'm not going to say much more. I hope you guys have enjoyed or learned or just had fun watching me play with paint, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Um, I hope I've kept company for the last hour or so. I don't think it's been that long. but And as always, be kind. Have fun. That's what life's all about. And happy creating. We'll see you on the next chapter. Thanks for watching. Bye.